Hey guys, this is a presentation on carotid brewing, patient assessment, and management. So a 70-year-old asymptomatic man is found to have a right carotid brewery. How would you assess and manage him? So in terms of diagnosis, my provisional diagnosis is that this gentleman has a carotid artery stenosis, whereby more than 7% and 12% of men above the age of 70 years old have carotid artery stenosis. My differential diagnosis is aortic valve stenosis and carotid dissection with or minus a sub hematoma. However, usually these are in younger patients who have a history of vigorous exercise, severe neck movement such as a motor vehicle accident, or in the case of the recent news, hit by a cricket ball. Uh, cricket ball. So in terms of history, I'd want to further elucidate his symptoms assess for any risk factors for carotid artery stenosis and also assess his medications and allergies. In terms of his symptoms, often carotid bruises are asymptomatic, but sometimes they have neurological deficits because the emboli um, go off into the head or technically the stenosis gets so bad that they result in watershed infarcts in that ipsilateral side of the brain. So you want to ask for neurological deficits such as loss of visual um, field deficit, weakness, aphasia, altered sensation, dysarthria, and if it's been more than 24 hours they had a stroke, and if it's less than 24 hours it's a transient ischemic attack. And carotid stenosis often results in watershed infarcts, however again they can form emboli that can go in and form um, specific vascular territory ischemia in strokes. In terms of risk factors, these can be divided into modifiable and non-modifiable. Modifiable includes smoking, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, hypercholesteremia. Non-modifiable risk factors include older age um, and do history and allergies. In terms of an examination for a carotid brewery, you want to look at the vitals, especially their heart rate and blood pressure. Do a full cardiorespiratory exam looking for signs of cardiovascular disease and a neurological exam looking for focal neurological deficits. In terms of investigations, these can be divided into bedside bloods and imaging. Bedside, I would do an ECG to assess for a Q wave suggestive of a previous myocardial infarct, and this is a strong risk factor for cardiovascular disease. I'd also like to look at bloods to assess their cardiovascular risk, such as their lipid profile, including their total cholesterol, heart density lipid proteins, fasting glucose, and EUCs. In terms of imaging, the gold standard is carotid angiogram, but this is rarely done because it is quite invasive, requiring a puncture in the femoral groin and, not, and catheterization of the aortic art and carotid artery. Alternatively, the most commonly used method is a duplex ultrasound, which has a 99% sensitivity and an 86% specificity. It's able to visualize the blood flow and visualize the plaque. A mild stenosis is that less than 50%, moderate stenosis 50 to 69%, um, high stenosis 70 to 79 percent and critical stenosis is 80 to 99 percent. Um, but also if they have neurological deficits that suggest that they have a stroke or a TIA, I would also consider getting a CT brain if this has been long-standing because you're able to see hypoattenuation or darkness of the brain parenchyma or previous brain um, atrophy and gliosis from previous strokes, uh, loss of white grey white matter differentiation in acute strokes, and subacute strokes and effacement of sulci related to the um, edema. In terms of MRI brain, um, this is very useful for more uh, acute and hyperacute strokes because you're able to see hyperintensity in the DWI. In terms of management for the carotid brewery, you can divide it into non pharmacological, pharmacological, and surgical. Non pharmacological includes smoking cessation if they're a smoker and snap. Um, improving their smoking, nutrition, increased physical activity. Um, and in terms of pharmacological, you can put them on antiplatelet therapy, aspirin, or clopidogrel, and optimize their cardiovascular risk. For example, put, um, make sure their HbA1c is less than 6.5%, um, improve their lipid profile by reducing total cholesterol whilst increasing high-density lipoproteins. And in terms of finally surgical, you can do carotid endarectomies, um, these are usually for those who are asymptomatic and have a carotid stenosis more than 70%. Symptomatic patients who have um, a TIA or a stroke and a stenosis greater than 50% or bilateral carotid stenosis because these patients are at risk of global um, watershed infarcts. 
So this is what a carotid endorectomy is looks like. It's an open procedure where they go in through the neck and then they go in through the um, the tunica ex tunica externa tunica media to get into the um, plaque which is found in the tunica intima um, and it's quite fibrous and fatty and lots of macrophages and foam cells and cholesterol they remove that and then they put on a patch and they suture it and so that stenosis is removed and so that's called a carotid endorectomy